kulturang Pilipino. Isang konsepto na paulit-ulit na hinuhubog at binubuo. Isang aspeto ng ating pagkakakilanlan na buhay at ating inaalagaan. Sa kabila ng pagkakaiba ng ating reliyon, kasarian, etnisidad at uring panlipunan, naniniwala ako na mayroon tayong karaniwang istorya na nagpapahiwatig kung sino tayo bilang tao at bilang nasyon. I believe that culture is a narrative that binds us as a nation. It is something we owe to our ancestors and heroes who built the Philippines as it is today. It is important to give meaning to what being a Filipino means. It is also important to protect our way of living, our heritage, that we will also pass on to our children and to our children's children. That is why for the past decades of public service, we have always advocated for the protection of cultural communities and practices. We have seen this in the weaving centers, the galleries, the cultural performances, our consistent support to our cultural agencies, other organizations that seek to preserve, protect, and enrich our country's material and non-material customs, all of which must be supported with institutional and legal strength. Today, we seek to adjust and adapt to the challenges of the modern times and respond to the needs of our evolving identity. It has been more than a decade since we passed Republic Act 10066, National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009. We are now revisiting this law with the integration of cultural mapping at all levels of government. We filed Senate Bill 622. We have Senator Binay's Senate Bill 117. Senator Revilla, Senate Bill 1094, House Bill 5110, Representatives de Venecia, Villafuerte, Oribata, Enciso, etc., amending the said act. We filed Senate Bill 624, establishing the Linangan ng Likang Bayan Institute for Living Traditions. It's a refiled measure which I wrote during the time of NCCA Chair Felipe de Leon, to serve as an important center and laboratory for the protection, promotion, development of Philippine communal traditions. We filed Senate Bill 242, cultural education program seeking to develop, integrate, institutionalize cultural education across our educational system. We believe that these steps are crucial in our goal of harmonizing our diverse identities and building a nation that is rich and proud, which is why I thank all of you for being virtually present today. I would like to request our committee secretary, Mr. Joey Tunak, to acknowledge our guests and resource persons. Um, and then we also allow, of course, our colleagues who are online to uh, make their opening statement. Mr. Tunak, who are those online aside from our colleagues that I already mentioned? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, may we acknowledge the virtual presence of Mr. Victorino Mapa Manalo, Chairman, Chairperson, National Commission on Culture and the Arts. Good morning, Paul. Uh, when you are called, uh, kindly open your cameras and acknowledge. Although I see. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. I would have loved to have you here face to face, as I did during your old taping during uh, the Christmas season. Uh, I would have preferred that you were here because these are very important measures. From the NCCA. Yes, I see you with Marichu. From the Cultural Center of the Philippines, Attorney Allen Francis Paligan. Of the legal of legal office from the national library of the philippines mr cesar gilbert q adriano director four from the commission on higher see their faces that they open their cameras please for their acknowledgement we have Mr. Erickson Reyes, Chief Education Program Specialist 2 from the Commission on Higher Education. We have Attorney Adrian Regin S. Donoan, Attorney 3, Legal Affairs Office, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. Who's representing the NCIT? Yes. 
uh, Adrienne Dunuan. Are you a commissioner? Is she a commissioner? Uh, good morning. Good morning. Yes, you're representing the NCIP. May I know your designation, please? Uh, good morning, Madam Senator. I am Adrian Dunuan from the Legal Affairs Office. I'm an attorney three under the legal year, your honor. Okay. Are you an indigenous person from what the uh, IP group? Yes, your honor. I'm a uh, Tuwali Ifugao from Kiangan Ifugao, your honor. Kiangan. Very yes. good. Do you recognize what I'm wearing? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's okay. uh, Ifugao Nation weaving. Uh, say that again so that it's clear, so that for those yes. who do not know, they know what it is. Yes, uh, that's an inabol from the Ifugao Nation weaving, your honor, organization. This is from Kiangan. Yes, your honor. It is Ikat. It is called Ikat. Yes, your honor. You also have Ikat behind you. Yes, your honor. I think we Can got it from the same organization. From the Bule family? Uh, no, from Ifugao Nation and the Kiangan Weavings Association, Your Honor. Mm. Uh, briefly, in 30 seconds, can you tell us what Ikat Weaving is all about? Um, it's, a, it's, a hand weave, it's a kind of hand weaving technique in, uh, where in, um, they use the traditional methods of weaving, Your, your Honor. Yes. Uh, the design of Ikat... Is it only done by the people of the Ifugao in the Cordillera region, or is Ikat weaving also done, utilized in other regions of the Philippines and other regions, perhaps in Southeast Asia? Yes, I believe, Your Honor, it is also um, being done in other regions, but they are also, but the the designs are different. They um, they use for the Specifically in Kiangan, we have our own designs, but um, the principle or the basic me te techniques that is being incorporated in creating the weavings, they are also being practiced in other re regions and other countries, Your Honor. But as to the designs, we have our particular designs. Okay. Uh, may I request from the NCIP, who is your chair? Uh, Chairperson Alan Capuyan, Your Honor. Oh, can you request, please? Uh, can we request in my next hearing to have the head of every agency? Because they are here when they ask for their budget, but uh, they also need to be here during hearings that will enhance their mandate. We'll do, Your Honor. Yes. And uh, today is Tuesday. Um, by, by tomorrow noon, may I request? request from the NCIP, just a brief memo on ICAT weaving in the Philippines and how it started. In short, the provenance of ICAT. Who started it? Is it the people of Kiangan in Ifugao? But there are similar uh, ICAT designs in Mindanao as well. And uh, in other countries uh, in Southeast Asia, there are ikat. So we'd like to know, is this an influence, let's say, from Indonesia? Mm, because, so I'd like to be educated. And perhaps the NCIP, um, Yuratuwali. Okay. Yes, uh, Madam, your partner. Okay. The Tuwali are an indigenous people's group, right? Do you also call an Ifugao house made by the Tuwali a Tuwali house or a Kiangan house? Because I have a Tuwali, but I was corrected and they say I should call it a Kiangan. So I sh should I call it a Tuwali or a Kiangan? This is not yet the hearing, okay? This is just the introduction of the guests. Mm -mm. So because you're a Tuwali, so um, should I call uh, a traditional Ifagao house from Kiangan uh, constructed by the Tuwalis, a Tuwali house or a Kiangan house? We don't, well, personally, Your Honor, um, we don't, what I know is that we don't really have a particular um, designation of that house. As long as it is built by an Ifuga, we just call it an Ifuga or Tuwali, ha Tuwali house because it's really that similar or we, based on the different um, so should I call it a Tuwali house or a Kiangan house? 
Um, it would depend, Your Honor, on who created that house. If it's found in within Kiangan, maybe it would appropriate. It would be called a Kiangan house. It, if it is created in Banawi, then maybe Banawi created by the Banawi ICC. Okay, ICC. understood, uh, understood. Because I have a Banawi house and I have a Mayoyo house and I have a Kiangan house. So I call it then a Kiangan house based on where it was created, not by the people who built it who were the Tuwali, correct? Is that correct? Um, generally, Your Honor, uh, you may call it a Tuwali house because the Tuwali community may also be found uh, in different um, municipalities in Ifugao, so like either. in Lagawe. Yes. So, but if okay, you, either. If, so the Tuwalis yes. built it, but it's uh, Tuwali is the IP group and Kiangan is a LGU, is, is a municipality. Clear. Yes, yes, there. Now, why do I ask these questions for everybody online and here? That's why cultural mapping is so important. So that I'm a four-term senator and I've authored many of our culture laws. And we have an indigenous person as an officer of the NCIP who happens to be a Tuwali. And still there is this conversation. We are uncertain about the usage of certain nomenclature. That is why cultural mapping is so important. Correct, Ms. Dunuan? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Uh, do you have cultural mapping for the province of Ifugao? Do you have a compendium of all your tangible and intangible heritage? As to the local government unit of Kiangan, I I'm not sure, Your Honor, but I believe that there is a museum in Kiangan if you the where where the living uh, the school of living tradition is also found, wherein we have all our documentations and books on yes. Ifugao and Kiangan culture, as well no, as the weaving weaving school where the elders go to weave their products, Your Honor. But as to the for the local government. As to the local government unit, I'm not quite sure, Your Honor, if they have cultural mapping in Kiangan as well as the other municipalities yeah. in Ifugao. I facilitated the building of a weaving center in Kiangan. Can you kindly uh, coordinate with my staff to find out what is the name of that weaving center from years back and photos of whether it has helped the locals? And you're referring uh, to the National Museum branch in Kiangan. Okay, we stop there because the Tuwalis are just one of the, how many ethno-linguistic groups do we have all over the country? Over a hundred? Chairman Ino, how many IP groups do we have all over the country? Chairman Victorino Manalo. The exact number do we have? I don't have the exact number. I'm just aware that we have at least 180 uh, ethno-linguistic ethno groups based on our languages. Ah, wait. Based on languages, is it 118 or 180? I'm, uh, I was just talking to some people earlier, and we were talk we, the number that we were discussing was 180. 180. Okay, but this is based on languages. So when we yes. say that we have 180 languages, I need to know um, the exact number of, F, at least to the best of our ability, of ethno-linguistic groups. In, and, and do we, is it synonymous to indigenous peoples? Okay. Uh, maybe a, in your opening statement, you can say that, or a memorandum from the NCCA so that we use the right nomenclature. So when we have, because when we do culture mapping, eventually when this is passed into law, we will need to know that. So ethno-linguistic groups, number 180, the KWF would know that. We have KWF later, they'll be acknowledged. And then how many indigenous peoples group? Uh, NCIP should know that. Um, our representative from NCIP, Ms. Dunuan, do you know how many ethno-linguistic groups and how many indigenous peoples group? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, based on our records, we uh, under the project Ipanao, we have documented 101 ethno uh, indigenous cultural communities. Um, with it, however, it is still an ongoing project to document all other 
um, undocumented indigenous cultural communities, Your Honor. But as of now, based on our records, we have 101 indigenous cultural com communities, based, okay. um, Your Honor. Okay, the NCIP to please submit the 101 list and where they're found. Um, and who among them have you, to your knowledge, initiated or completed cultural mapping in the 101? And um, Chair Manalo from NCCA, perhaps KWF, the 180 ethno-linguistic groups and the status of those 180 ethno-linguistic groups and whether their languages have been documented at all. Okay. Um, I will... Uh, we'll check on that, ma'am. And report Yes, to thank you. you. I will abbreviate my questions because this is just introduction of the resource persons. We proceed, uh, Mr. Tuna. Thank you. From the Commission on Higher Education, we have Mr. Erickson Reyes, Chief Education Program Specialist 2. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, we have Ms. Maria Linda A. Andrade, Chief Test Day Specialist 2. From the Department of Education, we have Ms. Christine Magbo, Supervising Education Program Specialist, Bureau of Learning Delivery. We have Mr. Ronnie Baldos, Senior Education Program Specialist, Bureau of Learning Delivery. Ms. Glenn Basio, Senior Education Program Specialist, Bureau of Curriculum Development. We also have with us Mr. Michael Cabrera, Indigenous People's Education, Bureau of Curriculum Development. From the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Mr. Gunaranao Musor, Deputy Assistant Secretary and Executive Director. We have Ms. Christina C. Popo, Acting Director. Ms. Emilio B. Felimer, Assistant Director. From our non-government agencies, we have National Committees, Committee for Monuments and Sites, Dr. Ivan Henares, Head. From the Heritage Conservation Society Incorporated, Attorney Mark Richard Evidente. From the National Archives of the Philippines, we have Ms. Maureen Janet Mercado. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair. Thank you. We acknowledge the presence uh, live of Senator J.V. Ejercito. How did you come to work in a motorcycle? No, not, uh, not today, Madam Chair. Uh, not I today. had an interview, but also took the chance because I saw you in the monitor. And uh, since this is about culture, uh, being a... Uh, and that son of uh, Cordilleras, no? uh, Mountain Province and Cariga. Very of course, good. we're very much interested in the, of course, in the preservation and the promotion of our heritage and culture. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Senator J.V. Ejercito. May we hear from Senator Binay and or Senator Robin Padilla, who were with us from the beginning online for their opening statement, if any. Will they speak? If not, I proceed. Senator Robin, hi. Good morning, Senator Robin Padilla. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Magandang magandang tumaga po sa ating ginang tagapangulo at sa ating pong kasama na si Senator J.B. Ejercito. At mabuhay po sa lahat po na ating mga panauhin. Isa pong malaking uh, karangalan para sa akin ang uh, makasama po sa talakayan na ito sapagkat tunay po ang uh, sinabi ng uh, talumpati ng ating ginang tagapangulo na baliwala ang uh, ipinaglaban ng ating mga ninuno na makuha ang ating kalayaan kung ang ating pong mga katutubo ay patuloy nating pababayaan. Sa mga panahon na ito, hindi lamang po kultura ang ninakaw sa mga katutubo, hindi lamang po lupa, hindi lamang po kayamanan, kung hindi pati po ang kanilang buhay ay ninanakaw na rin ng kapwa nating Pilipino. 
Kaya napakaganda po ng talakayan na ito upang atin pong buhayin muli kung ano po ang kayamanan at kultura na iniwan sa atin at hanggang sa ngayon ay inaalagaan po ng ating mga katutubong Pilipino. Akin pong uh, uh, binabati ang ating ginang na tagapangulo na siya pong tunay na ina ng kultura at ina ng kalikasan. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Senator Robin Padilla. Sa autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, ilan ang ating indigenous peoples group? I wonder uh, who can answer that question. We're not talking about Islam as a religion. We are talking about ARM, BARM now as a political entity, and how many IP groups are there aside from the Maranaos, the Yakans, the Tausugs, the Magindanaos, or am I mistaken in calling them indigenous peoples groups? Uh, Chair Ino Manalo, can you clarify? Just so that it's clear while we are with Senator Padilla. In the uh, politically divided region uh, by legislation called BARM, how many IP groups are there residing? And which are they? Which, uh, those which I mentioned, or am I mistaken? And who is missing? Um, May we hear from the NTCA, please? Yeah. Um, Ma'am, I will have to check further for, for detailed information like that. But uh, certainly in the BARM areas, there's a mix of uh, ethnolinguistic groups. No, uh, That would be one way we could we would count the, the ethnicities that are present. But uh, there would also be IP groups. Uh, they would be or sometimes referred to as smaller ethnolinguistic groups, such as the... So, uh, like like the different like the, 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 the Tiboli groups, uh, the Blaan groups, everything uh, uh, there would be groups like that, no. So I don't have the exact uh, numbers now. I would have to look at it, look it up further. Uh, you mentioned the Blaans and you mentioned the Tibolis. Usually they are not found in the Barm, but they are in Region Twelve or Eleven. So my question is, but if you're not ready to answer that, may we ask from NCCA, just so that it's clear. And um, of course, people travel and they migrate. We understand that. But which are the indigenous people's groups or indigenous cultural communities found or who reside in the Barm region? Would you consider the Yakans of Zamboanga Region 9, but were also in other uh, provinces in the BARM as IPs, yes? The Yakans would be considered, right? How about the Maranaos, the Tausugs, the Maguindanao? Uh, Ma'am, I think at this point, I'm not prepared to answer a question. Okay, that. Yeah. I'd rather that you say you're not prepared, uh, yes, just so that, because... To my knowledge, of course, the Maranaos of Lanao del Sur and some are in Lanao del Norte, but because we have Maranaos in Quiapo as well and in Green Hills and in San Juan. But what I'm saying is that uh, who are the indigenous peoples groups and would we consider them? Our brothers and sisters residing in the barm, um, again, I repeat, the Yakans because I helped support the Yakan village in Zamboanga, which is not part of the BARM, which is in Region 9, but we are not talking about geopolitical subdivisions. We're talking about ethnicity. That's why. So this discussion is deeper than uh, the proposed measures. That is why cultural mapping is so important. So uh, earlier, um, assignment number one, I asked the NCIP to give us a... Um, a history of ICAP in the Philippines. Second, I also asked the NCIP to give us a list, pair their records of all ICCs, 
uh, indigenous cultural communities uh, in the Philippines or indigenous peoples group. Um, number three, now we're requesting the NCCA to submit to us in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, recently renamed BARM. Um, within that geographical area, what are the indigenous peoples groups? There is no right or wrong here because, as I say, migration is part of it. And um, we go from province to province, but at least in so far as ethnicity, yung mga napanganak dun, anong maituturing natin? So we will ask for those answers from the agencies if you're not ready to answer it today uh, within the week. Mm. So uh, thank you, um, Senator Padilla. Uh, and Senator Binay, uh, are you ready, uh, Nance, to go online? If not, an opening statement from Senator Ejercito, then I can ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Anyway, I'd like to um, always uh, commend, commend you for really fighting for this, no? not only the environment, but the, pres or the preservation of the our heritage, our culture, which is very, very significant in this day and age of... Uh, modernization no? because of uh, this day and age of technology social media somehow our culture and history uh, may not be as uh, interesting anymore or you so I'm very I'm very interested uh, madam chair on how we can really make it more um, attractive again so probably we will have ask the NCCA later on what their plans are on promoting and uh, again making history, culture and heritage more in, uh, more attractive and interesting for our youth which is very important and uh, probably this one of the reasons uh, one of the things that is lacking in our country na yung, yung uh, love for history love for uh, culture and uh, heritage which is very, very significant, no? so that we will strengthen our patriotism, our identity as Filipinos. So um, that's all, Madam Chair, and uh, be rest assured that I will have the support again, as I mentioned, being uh, an adopted son of uh, Kalinga in the Mountain Province or the Cordilleras. I have always uh, uh, believed that we have to really, um, it's really very important to, uh, to promote to preserve and to uh, to protect our um, our uh, different cultural communities. By in this way, we will be able to promote our heritage and our culture and preserve that this as well. So later, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask the NCCA what their plans and programs are again to make the history and the heritage more attractive for our Filipino youth. That's all, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Senator J.V. Ejercito. Uh, take note that we are amending a 2009 legislation on national cultural heritage uh, with the inclusion of an already passed bill on third reading in the House of Representatives. So let me just state that we will only conduct this hearing and do a technical working group because sayang naman na pasanayan on third reading ng House of Rep. And it's not a new measure. I've been filing this for decades. Uh, and I hope that we pass it. Thank you, Senator JV, Senator Robin, and Senator Nancy for joining us. And in fact, um, Senator Nancy, I think, and Senator uh, Revilla and others are co authors as well. So I hope to be able to amend this and add cultural mapping as part of cultural heritage. And the other amendment to the Cultural Heritage Act would be the Institute of Living Traditions. Again, this is not a new measure since the chair uh, of NCCA, De Leon, was there uh, three chairs ago, four chairs ago, we have filed these measures. So we hope to be able to pass this and we hope to have a counterpart bill for this on the Institute of Living Traditions. Okay, we start with the NCCA with your comments on the proposed measures. Let me also state that the Cultural Education Act is at the standalone bill, which is not an amendment to the National Cultural Heritage, but there is a Cultural Education Act that we will tackle today. Um, 
I want all agencies who have been invited and the ComSec to see other agencies of government and people's organizations and NGOs to submit their comments on ILT, CM, cultural mapping, as amendments to the National Cultural Heritage Act and the Cultural Education Act as a standalone. Are we clear? Para maliwanag sa lahat ng ahensya nandito, dalawang batas ang aking ginagawa, ating ginagawa. Amienda ng National Cultural Heritage, pagdagdag ng Institute of Living Tradition at ng Cultural Mapping. Let me state, hindi natin inintay ang batas, ginagawa na natin. I have a compendium of at least 17 books on cultural mapping in Antique. We've introduced cultural mapping since the time of Brother Armin Luistro, 10 years ago. And this is nothing new. We simply want to legislate it so that even long after we are gone from this Senate, I hope to stay here for the next six years with Senator JV, but long after we are gone, the next generations will know the importance of cultural mapping and it is immortalized and institutionalized. For example, the city of San Juan, city na kayo, no? It would be good to see a cultural mapping. And you have the, um, the heritage area, the tunnel. Yes, Madam Chair, we are, we've always uh, given importance to culture and history and uh, heritage. That's why we uh, have an area because San Juan, as you know, is a part of history yes. where the uh, where the first battle of the Katipunan happened. No? That's called Pinaglabanan. So we have the Museo of Katipunan. It would be good to have a cultural yes. mapping workshop. That's correct. And then all the results, you can have it in a compendium. Yes, that's correct. We have the yeah. Museo ng Katipunan there, and we have uh, we really uh, promote and uh, prioritize and uh, give importance to our culture and yes. heritage. Very good. Okay, thank you. May we hear from the NCCA? So, uh, Chair Ino, newly installed Chair of the National Commission on Culture. We also have Marichu, our Deputy Executive Director. Uh, are you? Is that Marichu? Yes. Ma Good morning, yes. ma'am. Morning. And who else is beside you? This is uh, Edi Oka Kas Kasaysay. Good morning, Madam Senator. Ah, good morning, our Executive Director. Oka. Yes, 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 ma'am. From I Mindanao, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Do you have you an opening referring... statement or do you have your comments on the bills, uh, Chair Eno? Yeah, there... We're we're finalizing our comments to be su for submission no? because right now we have uh, we're also involved in the planning for the agency, but uh, with regard to the to what the the bill that you had uh, that you wanted us to comment on the general the general our general comment is that some of these things we have already been implementing uh, such as cultural mapping, and these are things that we will. Uh, Make sure will be strengthened by the by the legislation that is being that is before us. No, uh, as it as it is, uh, we have been asking different age, different LGUs to submit already the results of cultural mapping, and uh, many age, many LGUs have already submitted, and we have been giving out. Um, uh, we have been doing technical assistance to for different. Uh, for different uh, LGUs to to carry out cultural mapping. Do you have a list? Part of your submission, please, would be a list of all local governments that have completed cultural mapping. I think one of the most comprehensive would be Antique, and I can proudly say this was a pandemic project. While people yes. were on lockdown, UP Visayas and the teachers of Antique were trained and came up with 17, was 17 books? 21. Uh, 21. <laughs> 21 books, hard copy, which I hope we can also put online. It's a model cultural mapping. And in fact, I worked, uh, NCIP, you're still there, uh, Ms. Dunon. I've worked with the <clears throat> state universities of the Coldirera, including IFSU, uh, Ifugao State University with the previous president. 
Mohayon. Yes, si President Mohayon, uh, the incumbents, and in fact, ilan ba ang SUCs sa Cordillera? Kalinga State U, uh, Ifugao State University, ilan pa? Sa Mountain Province, sa Abra, Benguet, Apayao. How many SUCs did we work with? Car, how many SUCs? There were six, six SUCs. So the output of the work we've done with the SUCs, the six SUCs of the Cordillera, is already part of cultural mapping. Okay. So we will ask um, NCCA to submit that, uh, which LGUs have yeah. completed their cultural mapping. We'll do that, ma'am. Uh, we Right now we have about six, we have 98 LGUs that have submitted and we have uh, 177 LGUs that are ongoing. But clearly we'll, we will need to take this to a higher level and in, enhance the number of LGUs who are involved in cultural mapping. Okay, I saw that um, Ivan Enares was raising his hand virtually. Do we have Ivan on the line? Ivan, Dr. Ivan Anthony Enares. Hi, Ivan. Good morning. Are you, uh, please unmute. We recognize Ivan Enares. Me now. Dr. Ivan Enares, we saw you earlier. Okay, you're there. Can you can you speak? I know that you may be abroad. Can you speak and tell us about your comments of the bills? If you've not studied it, we can send it to you. But the importance of cultural mapping, the integration of ILTs, living traditions in the National Cultural Heritage Act, and the creation of the cultural education program. Ivan. Yes. Can Can you hear me? No. I think my mic is uh, not working. No, it's clear. Go ahead. Proceed, please. Okay. Yes, de definitely cultural mapping uh, is very important. Uh, there's a need to really standardize uh, the uh, procedures that are being done in the local government units. Uh, while we have uh, um, received a lot of um, uh, cultural maps, uh, there's still a need for training. Uh, more training among our local government units in order to um, uh, to standardize our cultural maps. When I raised my hand earlier, I was supposed to mention that there are 13 Bangsamoro groups or Muslim groups that uh, comprise the Bangsamoro region. So, um, uh, yes, definitely there's a need to standardize. We don't have uh, definitive um, uh, I definitely agree with you, Senator, that there are no definitive categories, uh, inventories of uh, various cultural um, assets that we have in the Philippines, from um, indigenous peoples to um, um, to languages. Uh, we don't have an exact number. Uh, there has always been a debate as to uh, what the exact number is, and I think it is about time that we come up with a definitive list of uh, all our uh, cultural groups, uh, all our languages, uh, designations for uh, cultural properties, both tangible and intangible. So uh, we definitely need to come up with a, a definitive uh, uh, list as well as uh, clearly defined uh, designations for um, all these properties. Can you please name the 13 indigenous peoples group in the Bangsamoro region? Uh, you would have the Bajau, uh, the Iranun, Jama Mapun, Kalagan, Kalibugan, Magindanao, Maranao, Palawanon, Molbog, Sama, Sangil, Tausug, and Yakan. Very good. Professor, I only named four or five out of the 13. So. I was educated this morning. So um, definitely 
cultural mapping is important, must be integrated in our 209 National Cultural Heritage Act. Uh, Institute of Living Tradition. Can you give your comments on ILTs? This is nothing new. We're doing it. I've supported schools of living tradition. We say institute so that we put the schools together into an institute that's basically the same. Um, and would we say that schools of living tradition or ILTs would be part of cultural mapping, right? When we map, we map the living traditions. Yes, that is right, Senator. Uh, in fact, when we had a uh, cultural tourism project in uh, the Agusan Marsh, uh, the Agusan Manomo there had already lost all their cultural traditions. So we had to bring in uh, an other cultural bearers of the Agusan Manobo from outside the marsh uh, in order to tra train them again on the uh, traditions of the Agusan Manobo. So definitely, uh, these schools of living traditions will be very important, especially uh, in indigenous communities where uh, the, uh, the uh, residents have already forgotten their uh, cultural traditions. We will give you a copy of the bills, or have you received it, uh, Ivan, so that you can give your comments on how we can improve it and enhance it? Um, I, I I just received the copy uh, today. So I will yeah. look through it, Madam Senator, and then I will very give good. my comments on it. Thank you very, very much. Very good. Okay. Thank you. I'm sure you were also part uh, 13 years ago of our law of the Cultural yes, Heritage Act, and now we're amending yes, it. Bakit hindi nyo naisip or hindi natin naisip noon nakasama ang living traditions at ang cultural mapping? Ma'am, ma'am kasi po initially the heritage law when we were drafting it uh in uh, uh before 2009 was really supposed to be for built heritage. Ah, uh, I see. But it, it it expanded and that's the reason why um hindi kompleto yung pagkakagawa because parang naging afterthought po during the uh, process of creating a heritage law yung mga dinadagdag but uh, originally it was supposed to be for built heritage um ang naging concern po natin dito is that kapag pinagsama-sama ho natin lahat uh, some of the provisions for example for uh, for uh, built heritage na incorporate then for uh, movable uh, heritage. So we really have to um, define uh, what is covered by certain provisions of the law uh, because uh, obviously built heritage is a very different, they have different characteristics versus uh, movable heritage. And uh, some provisions that would apply for built heritage should not apply, for example, for uh, movable heritage. And some provisions for movable heritage should not apply apply for uh, built heritage. So these are things. Uh, okay, we do not fault uh, anybody for. At, okay. Uh, when we do, uh, while well, I'm ending the note. Yes, ma'am. Tinanong ko lang yes, yan, kaparte naman ako nung gumawa din ng unang batas, kaya nga ang batas inaamendahan para maging mas kompleto. Now, can you yes, define what is movable heritage? Is movable heritage the same as intangible heritage? Ma'am, uh, movable is physical, meaning you can touch it, uh, whereas intangible is something that uh, uh, you can basically you cannot touch. Uh, so Why do you call it movable? Uh, like for example, ma'am, yung mga santo, uh, mga furniture, uh, the uh, mga uh, these are these are movable heritage. Uh, whereas built heritage, these are the houses or structures, anything that has been constructed um, and is part of our our heritage. So uh, built heritage is uh, uh, immovable. And then you have uh, these uh, smaller uh, uh, cultural assets that are movable. And then intangible would be the, uh, the uh, uh, song, dance, uh, literature, uh, the knowledge of uh, weaving, for example. Uh, the uh, indigenous knowledge uh, systems and practices that would include the planting cycles. Uh, these are the intangibles, ma'am. Very good. Actually, alam ko na yan, pero mas magandang kamagpaliwanag para maliwanag sa atin. So, are we saying then that the existing law of 2009 was more focused on built heritage and the movable heritage and may have ignored or for, not forgotten, but did not focus too much 
on cultural mapping and intangible heritage? Yes, ma'am. There is a need to um, there is a need to incorporate uh, intangible heritage and cultural mapping uh, into the law. In fact, uh, one thing that uh, we proposed in the Senate version of one zero eight six six that was removed in the House version. Uh, was the provision for local government units to declare their heritage at the local level. So if you look at the original uh, Senate version of uh, RA10066, uh, you will see a provision there that local governments are empowered to uh, declare heritage at the local level. And that's one thing that I hope that can be returned uh, to the uh, current legislation. Mm, explain. Uh, it was taken out. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, there was a provision for uh, regional cultural properties, provincial cultural properties, city and municipal cultural properties, as well as barangay cultural properties. So uh, the respective legislative bodies of the regions, the provinces, the cities, the municipalities, and the barangays were uh, allowed to declare at the local level, although this is already covered by uh, the local government code, uh, uh, the, uh, they are empowered to declare locally by the local government code. Uh, the heritage law was supposed to make that provision clearer that local governments can declare heritage at their level. Uh, it was probably not included because, as you said, it's already part of the local government code. But it can be a reiteration? Ma'am, hindi po siya clear doon. Uh, yung ah. provision lang na ginagamit doon is that the local government um, can um, impose, uh, how do I say this, restrictions, but it doesn't specifically mention heritage. It's a general uh, mm. provision that local governments can impose restriction on property. Uh, we can say so that it's also not, uh, I, I know the fear of some, uh, hindi na sila makakadevelop pag kailangan i-clear na naman sa local government so we can make it like local governments may declare may may use the power to declare um heritage sites whether built or even declare intangible heritage practices right that is right ma'am uh, may natuklasan yes. Let's say, itong si Senator JV, mahilig kumain. May natuklasan sa kanya pag-iikot sa kanyang motor, ang tawag mo, motor? Motorismo. Sa kanyang motorismo. Napunta sa Cavite. May natuklasan na napakasarap na pagkain. Na hindi niya alam anong tawag doon na sinauna. So, i-research niya yon. Yon ay parte. So, yung LGU, mapuntahan niya. Pwede niyang sabihin sa sangguni ang bayan, ideklara nga nyo itong natukla sa kong pagkain na ginagamit ang ingredient na ito. Ngayon ko lang nakita sa aking motorismo, ideklara nyo to parte ng inyong lokal na uh, intangible heritage, part of culinary heritage. Tama, Dr. Ivan? Ganun, no? Yes, Senator. That is correct. Para ma-preserve. Ayun. Mahalaga yan, ha? Kasi... Yeah. Um baka lang ma-misunderstand ng iba na ay masyado maraming restrictions so wag ganun wag nating gawin restrictions gawin natin uh, para maengganyo to encourage local governments in preserving uh, what they know but may not be documented yes senator i think that what is really missing in our heritage laws are incentives uh, for example uh, in the city of san fernando pampanga in 2004 we were the first local government unit in the Philippines to grant 100% per real estate tax uh, exemption for heritage households. So these were copied by other LGUs, but if we can include uh, all these incentives, if even the um, exemption, for example, from estate taxes, many of our heritage houses are demolished because the, uh, the heirs, do not have the cash to pay BIR for the estate tax, so they just sell the house. And, okay, let's and, see. Uh, um, use the this proceeds is not to pay to the for uh, means, no? the estate taxes. Uh -oh. uh, that's good. However, uh, this will complicate and lengthen the process because yes, the Ways and Means Committee is not part of this committee.
it can be okay, another maybe you can it will be a uh, another bill okay thank um, you, thank Chairman you, Mana yes. yes okay um don't don't leave us um dr enares uh chair manalo you are raising your hand chair you know i just wanted to clarify you know, ivan i think you might also want to uh, consider i mean i'm sure you're from, very aware of this that when we talk about built heritage and intangibles and movable heritage these categories are not necessarily um are not necessarily uh impermeable no they're interrelated uh, uh built uh, the built an uh, intangible heritage uh, could like weave the skill of weaving would be something you cannot separate from a loom which is tangible which is movable heritage and some of these movable heritage have settings and contacts contexts that are actually built heritage so, so when you're addressing one aspect of the heritage you you are also in a way touching the others and it's necessary to see them all, to see them to take them together as a continuum thank you uh, of course, we take note of that. Uh, it, we don't say if it is immovable or movable, it is not intangible, but yes, um, that's very clear. Since Dr. Enares uh, cannot stay with us very long, um, we would like to hear all that you can say now and your comments on including cultural mapping and living traditions in the National Cultural Heritage Act and to have a standalone legislation on cultural education act uh otherwise then we, then we will let you go so that we will let the others speak Ivan, thank you very um, much yes. senator um i bet i definitely agree with uh chairman manalo uh they these are definitely interconnected um aspects of uh our heritage um, I think uh, when we talk about cultural mapping, it just needs to have uh, certain designations. Like, for example, in Korea, uh, they have even numbers you know, for their intangible heritage uh, uh, assets. You know? Let's like, say, for example, for weaving, uh, the loom, as a specific loom, for example, can be declared as a important cultural property uh, because it is already a very uh, historic loom, for example. Uh, the... Um, the art of uh, or the knowledge or the skills of weaving uh, can be declared as specifically as an intangible uh, cultural uh, property and then the house for example where the weaver uh, is um, uh, doing the weaving can be declared if it is a historic or a heritage house can be declared on its own as a, as a cultural property as well but yes we do we do uh, understand and agree with the uh, the statement that these are all interconnected. Uh, but when we do our cultural mapping exercise, uh, all these assets should be listed individually if they deserve to be listed individually. Uh, so I, I think uh, that is what we need to uh, really uh, work on with our cultural mapping. Uh, everything, all our cultural assets should be uh, uh, defined in this inventory in this list. Thank you very much. Um, just you, so that it's clear, when we speak of cultural mapping, we would include built heritage, which would include, of course, architecture, tangible heritage, like dwellings, um, intangible heritage, our indigenous skills, and our natural heritage as well, right? That is based so on I'm, what UNESCO describes movable, as movable cultural heritage. mapping. Mm. Yes, ma'am. So there is tangible and intangible heritage. And then yes. as a subcategory of tangible, you have movable and movable. immovable. Immovable. And immovable. Yes. But natural heritage. Ma'am, that is another thing that we will uh, need to sit down about because I think that the Department of Environment will have to come into the picture because they have a separate NIPAS law for that. No, so I'm I, not no, sure. Oh, oh. Oh, yes, I'm author of the INI Pass Law, but we would include uh, in cultural mapping the natural heritage because many of our indigenous cultural communities uh, thrive and live 
in protected areas, which is part of our natural heritage. Again, we cannot extricate that and say, iba yung kanilang uh, kabuhayan sa natural heritage. So, and this is from UNESCO, it has recognized cultural mapping as a tool in preserving our tangible and intangible cultural assets. And these cultural elements would include built, tangible, intangible, and natural. So we must include natural heritage as part of our cultural mapping. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I think we should include the category cultural landscape uh, in, in the cultural mapping. So that would encompass okay. the, um, the, uh, the interconnection of uh, natural and cultural heritage. Okay, yeah. so we would appreciate receiving your comments regarding that. So, so that it's very clear uh, in the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009, um, tangible heritage was part of it and it should include, was this amended? No. Hmm? No, it's not been amended, yes. Um, but we propose it to include um, tangible and intangible heritage. Now, so that we include Actual cultural heritage, heritage mapping. Anyway, the definition of terms, um, we will uh, get to that, but we must include cultural heritage mapping, natural heritage, um, and the issue of LGUs, uh, to be able to conduct their own heritage mapping and for them to cite or legislate certain areas as um, heritage areas. And of course, Indigenous Knowledge Systems, Skills and Practices, IKSSP, uh, through the Schools of Living Traditions is also um, one of the amendments. Uh, you know, Chair, you know, you were raising your hand. I just want to concur with Dr. Ivan that uh, uh, the, the issue of the cultural landscapes, no? because it's in the context of cultural landscapes that we understand that very often the built heritage or the, or the, the tangible um, heritage or even the intangible heritage is actually can be better understood because of the natural heritage. In other words, you cannot separate uh, similarly natural heritage and uh, human-made heritage are interconnected. So there, for example, certain poems, for example, that use uh, the, the uh, a tree as a metaphor or symbol in a, in a in a in an epic cannot be understood if the natural heritage, if the tree is already gone. So it's very important to underscore that these, as, as Ivan has said, these are these are interconnected and are are interconnected because of the cultural landscape. Thank you. Okay, let me just state also that the term natural heritage is introduced um, and shall refer to the flora and fauna, <coughs> the natural biological and physical components of the environment and related ecosystems and biodiversity, whether terrestrial, wetland, or marine. Then we also mentioned about LGUs. Uh, they're mandated to conduct comprehensive cultural heritage mapping. And that's why we have the CHED here and the DEPED aside from other agencies who can also help our LGUs. Hear from the Dep Ed and the Ched. Are you online? Our representatives, do you have something to say or would you like to submit? Yes, uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I am Christine from the Department of Education. And as per our colleagues from the, the department, we shall be submitting our inputs to your office as soon as possible. Time.
may I know whether the bills were sent to you and whether you have studied it and uh, are you ready to discuss it or not yet? You will um, just submit it to us. Oh, um, actually, we just uh, recently received yeah. the invitation to attend the meeting and we're currently on the works to consolidate all our inputs from the different offices and the different bureaus. Okay, thank you. How about Ched? Okay, we have a hand yeah. raised. Uh, Arvin Villalon. Arvin Manuel Villalon. Yes. Yes. Uh, representing Ched, I am part of the Technical Committee on Cultural Education. And okay. um, although I received uh, the invitation just, uh, just this time, but uh, we concur that uh, we will be uh, reviewing uh, the papers regarding this. But just for a note, because I have seen that uh, natural heritage is part of cultural mapping, that we do have for the Bachelor in Culture and Arts Education, that we do have a, a three-unit course on Philippine heritage, and that includes also um, natural heritage as well. So this will be uh, very timely, especially for teaching our would-be uh, MAPE teachers later on, because if the intention is really to tap them as resources, so both from DepEd, our MAPE teachers, and at the same time, the same time, those who are teaching the Bachelor in Culture and Arts Education can help out in this uh, cultural mapping uh, law. Thank you, Mr. Villalon. Thank you. All the agencies present, may we request you to submit your comments on the proposed measures uh, after the hearing. Mm -mm. And then the request of the agency, uh, my request of NCIP and NCCA uh, by tomorrow noon. Um, Dr. Casanova is here, Commission ng Wikang Filipino. How many languages are there in the Philippines? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. Sa aming pong tala ay uh, mayroon po tayong isang daan na tatlumpong wika sa ating bansa. Tatlumpo. Opo. Pero may mga bagong uh, development po kasi patuloy po ang pananaliksik ng Komisyon sa Wikang Pilipino at uh, ngayon po ay uh, uh, sinasabi ng aming uh, mananaliksik na meron na po tayong isang uh, daan at tatlumpot apat at ito po ay kanilang iulat sa lalong madaling panahon. Iba-ibang numero natin. Opo. Sa, iba din po kasi sa UP, wika. iba din po sa mm -hmm. Summer Institute of Linguistics okay. na matagal na pong nag-aaral ng mga wika sa ating yeah. bansa. Kailan natin tinatawag na language at kailan tinatawag na dialect? Meron po tayong tinatawag na uh, mga wika at dialecto. Ano po? Yung wika, ito yung wika na uh, nakagisnan po ng isang pamayanan na nabuo ng kanilang mga uh, mamamayan nung unang-unang panahon. At may mga wika po na tinatawag na dialekto. Yung dialekto po kasi, ito yung variety ng isang wika. Ang halimbawa po, ang Tagalog ay isang wika, isang pangunahing wika. At meron po itong mga variety o tinatawag nating dialekto. So pag sinabi nating variety, uh, kasi tumbas lang po yan ng dialekto. Halimbawa, ang Tagalog po. Meron pong Tagalog Batangas, Tagalog Cavite, Tagalog Laguna, Tagalog Mindu, Mindoro, Marinduque, Bataan, Bulacan at iba pa po. Ano? At iyan ay mga variety o dialekto ng wikang Tagalog. Ganon din po ang wikang Cebuano. Ang wikang Cebuano po ay may mga variety din po. Ano po? At uh, matatagpuan ang mga variety ng Cebuano sa iba't ibang mga pamayanan at lalawigan po sa Mindanao. Okay, maging sa Negros po ay may bahagi ng Negros na Cebuano ang wika. Kaya uh, mayroong isang pangunahing wika na mayroon pong dialekto o natawag nating variety. Um, sa Bicol po ay uh, maraming mga wika at uh, bawat wika po ay nagkakaiba sa ilang mga aspekto. Okay. Uh, kaya maaaring mangyari na sa isang lalawigan o sa isang rehiyon ay nagkakaiba-iba ang mga wika. 
ganun din po sa Ilocano. Ang Ilocano po ay wika na pangunahin at meron din po itong mga variety o dialecto kasi po alam naman natin na malawak ang sakop ng wikang Ilocano ngunit ito po ay may mga mga variety no pagpupunta po tayo halimbawa sa Tugigaraw uh, sa Isabela sa maging sa Nueva Vizcaya may mga Ilocano din pong nagsasalita doon maliban po sa Ilocosur at Norte at maging po sa uh, sa iba't ibang bahagi po sa sa Hilagang Luzon no sa Mountain Province sa Cordillera, okay, ay may mga variety po ng mga Ilocano. Thank you very much. Um, we will suspend our virtual hearing now towards a technical working group to be headed by uh, Attorney Ipatuna in my office. And I would expect that the agencies would give two submissions. The amendments to the National mm -hmm. Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 to include cultural mapping and ILTs, Institute of Living Traditions, as an amendment to the existing law. And second would be a new legislation on cultural education program. Uh, because I see that the agencies don't seem ready, uh, perhaps you would be, uh, bet it would be better if you would submit your comments on this, on the Philippine Cultural Education Program, all of that. Um, in fact, it's also included in the PDB plan, okay? So uh, I will um, not adjourn, but suspend this, to schedule and the submissions will be by today and tomorrow at the latest for all submissions and a technical working group um, at later part of this week, this Wednesday on Monday or Tuesday next week. And I want to be able to sponsor this within the month of January uh, before the first week of February. February being Arts Month, and hopefully we can pass it. Oh, we see at least one of the two in February, which is Arts Month. Okay, yeah, because there's so many agencies, but they always say that they will submit. They will submit. Um, let me just. Uh, I will be patient. It's New Year, but um, in our next hearings. I would request every agency to be prepared for the head of agencies to be present, even virtually, and second, to be prepared and not to say that we will prepare uh, with our position papers. But we understand that <clears throat> invites were sent out a week ago. Mm, it doesn't take 24 hours to prepare a position paper. You were given your budgets, you have your salaries, you have their benefits, you have your MOE, operational expenses. So you must be ready uh, for your intelligent discussion on bills at hand. In the meantime, I'll be patient. I'll give you the time for submission this afternoon, latest tomorrow, and a technical working group will be um, scheduled Beginning of next week now. So yeah. uh, Attorney Ipatluna will head it, but I may, I may, and I will show up. Mm -mm. Okay? So um, thank you, Dr. Casanova, for being present here physically. Thank you also to the others who uh, have joined us. Um, yeah, I, I no longer will mention each and everyone. Is there anyone virtually who would like to speak? Because I don't see their faces. They're all knocked off. If not, we suspend the hearing uh, for a technical working group, just one. And then we hopefully will be ready because it's been passed on um, the DFA. Who in the DFA is present online? Can you 
Um, President Senator, um, my name is uh, Mr. Goner Musurf. I'm the Deputy As Assistant Secretary from the Office of Public and Cultural Diplomacy. It is now called Public and Cultural Diplomacy. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on the measures or you will just sub um, submit? Well, first of all, thank you, ma'am, for, um, for inviting us to this hearing. Um, we will be submitting our official comments to the bills proposed. For, for the meantime, I would just like to convey the following that um, 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 we, um, uh, we acknowledge the inclusion of DFA as among the agencies that um, uh, LGUs are supposed to work with for the enhancement of cultural diplomacy and participation in the programs of UNESCO. This is uh, in regard to the bills related to cultural mapping. So um, we look forward to um, having this uh, a bill passed and hopefully this will also uh, um, help us in uh, doing our functions in terms of cultural diplomacy. In fact, during the recent um, um, retooling program that we did for uh, cultural officers from, from selected uh, foreign service posts, one of the recommendations actually was to conduct cultural mapping to assist us in 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 promoting uh, Philippine culture culture overseas. With regard to cultural education, uh, we also we also acknowledge the efforts to integrate and mainstream this uh, initiative. And in fact, uh, more than just um, promoting it at the uh, at uh, the uh, in in the academe, we also um, emphasize the need also to have or of a continuing education initiative, because in the case of uh, the DFA, um, a lot of our cultural um, officers do not have enough training to conduct cultural diplomacy. That's why last December, uh, in cooperation with NCCA, we um, you know uh, we convened or um, held the inaugural uh, cultural retooling course. So we hope to um, we hope to um, uh, institutionalize this. In the Can you kindly course. repeat the course? Okay. What is the name of the course, sir? It's it's a it's a retooling program for cultural officers. From retooling. Retooling. Okay. Retooling. Yes, ma'am. Um, so this is the first time that such a course is being offered in the DFA because we recognize the um, fact. This is a cultural retooling course, cultural yes. mapping course. What is it called? Uh, well, um, um, it's supposed to um, um, update our cultural officers on how they can better do their mandate in terms of promoting culture. Because here in the department, we have a lot of free tooling programs for finance officers, for assistance to nationals, okay. but we have yet to May do- May I know how long it took? Just one day? Was it one week? Um, this was for one week, ma'am. So we gathered all the selected cultural officers from, from those posts with Centro Rizal. So hopefully this year, um, we can- Did they have to come home for the conference? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So, so expensive, because, you could have had it online. Sa mga uh, well, all over the world or our cultural officers came to Manila for uh, that one for, week seminar? Uh, only for ano ma'am, only for uh, those with Centro Rizal because um, the whole uh, concept of the cultural retooling program, uh, well, that, that from the title itself, it's called Dama. So it was a multi-sensory um, program. So it was not enough to do it virtually. So okay. uh, this is something... Um, may I request... Thank you very much. May I request the Public and Cultural Diplomacy Unit of the DFA to submit to us. The central result was created because of this law, right? 209. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's been 13 years. May we see what the central result, uh, if all embassies and or consulates in the world have central result. And is it just a name that there's a room and then you have several books or do you have activities so just kindly give us a summary from the enactment of the law in 2009 to the present. How have the central results in different embassies in the world conducted themselves with the budgets given you? What activities did you do? Second, I initiated the Philippine Studies Program, different from the central result. From the time I first initiated this in SOAS in the UK, may I ask the DFA to submit what embassies and consulates and jurisdictions in the world have we had Philippine studies? What kind of courses were offered? Were there Filipino lecturers or foreign lecturers? Who were they? Who attended the lectures? Were they students or invited professors or outside? And what was the feedback? 
Was it welcomed or was it a flop? Did anyone attend? Was it enriching? Was it for the children of Filipino migrants? Was it for DFA uh, personnel and officers in that jurisdiction? So I would like to know. So starting with SOAS, to Ruhr, to, uh, to Humboldt, to Complutense, to um, Isaiah's where you were, right, in Singapore, yes, to, um, was it Michigan? Michigan, to NYU, to, mm, and dami. Then I'm also giving, and I would like to ask you, to coordinate with incoming with ambassador, newly confirmed ambassador Luli Arroyo Bernas in Austria to get uh, the approval of the best university in Vienna uh, for us to have Philippine studies because she's interested, as well as in Sorbonne University in France. It's in Paris. Sorbonne is in Paris, right? Oh, the ambassador Michel Bocos already knows about this. Does the ambassador, Philippine ambassador in Paris know about it? Yes, Knows about it from October. May I know if the ambassador acted on it? The French ambassador only learned about it the other day and uh, ambassador to Austria, Luli in Austria. So for 2023, we will have other Philippine studies, um, but for sure we will have in France, I hope it can be Sorbonne, and then in Austria, uh, reach out to the post because Ambassador Arroyo is going yet in March. But we would like to get things moving. Okay. So an assessment of Philippine studies, an assessment of Central Rizal, because we may amend Central Rizal or see how we can make it more dynamic. Because I don't want Central Rizal to just be a name to just be a corner, like a little library with no activities. Like we initiated the documentation of Rizal, uh, Rizal's footsteps uh, figuratively in Germany. Uh, that was during pandemic. It was a pandemic project. This is something that Central Rizal in Germany should have done, but it had to take someone not in a DFA to do this project with the NCCA, of course. So what I'm saying is that I want to know what projects since 2009 have the central results all over the world. How many, how many central results are there? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll check, ma'am, the, the figure, ma'am. Hold on, ma'am. Lahat naman ang tanongin ko dito eh. Sa executive, puro kayo will check eh. Puro naman kayong we will submit, we will check eh. Bakit ako dyan? Ma. Hindi pala nagtrabaho na, alam ko na. O sige, so wag na muna. Sige, I'll be patient. I'll be patient with all of you. Um, importante, pag pupunta kayo sa hearing, alam nyo mga tinatanong ko ha? Kasi trabaho nyo yan. So, okay. I would like a central result assessment because central result, confirm it, um, if I'm accurate, if I'm correct, was created from this 2009 law, correct? Yes, ma'am. Tama ko? Yes. So, perhaps we could enhance Central Rizal. Yung ginagawa ko nga, parang sa Central Rizal na yun. <laughs> Dapat yung mga ginagawa namin, yung ginagawa nyo eh. Okay, so, an assessment of Central Rizal and the Philippine Studies Program and suggestions where else we can put Philippine Studies, okay? Baka marami pa akong maisip, marami pang homework nyo, Yun na muna, tuldukan na muna natin. Copy, Senator. Okay, yes. So who else would like to speak? Because I don't want to hear, we will submit. <laughs> uh, you know, when we used to go to class, uh, when we have a test, we did not say we will submit. No, it's due now. <laughs> Fill in the papers. Finish or not finish, submit your papers. <laughs> so I'm being very patient with all of you. You ask for your budgets and you're here face to face during the budget and we give you a big budget which is signed into law. So may I kindly request all agencies um, next time uh, in the technical working group, please come armed with your brains, with your soul, with your knowledge, with everything. Armed. Okay? Hindi pa we will submit because when I present this on the floor, I cannot advise my colleagues, I will submit. We have to know it. 
and you know it because you are the experts. That's why you are in the agencies, right? Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Musor. Okay. Uh, who else would like to speak? But I bar you from saying we will submit because everybody needs to submit. And I've been here since 1998. Let me advise all agencies. People who are facing the Senate must be armed with the knowledge, has a prepared statement on the comments and the measure, and will submit the comments of the agency. Iba pa yung alam nyo, and you are the resource persons and experts that we should ask, and you should have the information ready. Iba pa yung we will submit. You don't just come in and say, good morning, we will submit. So what's the point of having a hearing? But then again, I will be patient. It's the new year. But then again, this is our job. And we're all being paid by the Filipino people. So this is a very important measure. Um, salamat, uh, Ivan. Dr. Ivan Enares, uh, naghandaka at nagbigay ng mga, uh, ng mga um, komento mo. Yes. And, and we salamat sa inyong lahat for going online. But I would expect a uh, heartier, more constructive, more inspiring, educational, learning discussion next time. Okay? In the meantime, maraming salamat po nang kayo ay online. Hindi ko man nakikita mga mukha ng iba. So last call, is there someone who still would like to speak? Okay, please open all your cameras so I see your faces. Yes, and then you submit your... Next time, we will submit, huh? you should be ready. Huh? Everybody should be ready, please. Everybody should be competent. Incompetence is not tolerated in my hearings. We should not be working in government if we're, if we're not ready to answer questions. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, um, Comsec, Mr. Tunak. Lahat ng kanilang hinanda po, hingin po natin ngayong araw because they should have been ready when we uh, invited them. And then the additional inputs are requested will be for tomorrow. Um, am I speaking to my comsec? Yes. Okay. Oh, Senator Padilla's there there. May tanong ka, Senator Robin? Oh. Uh, wala na po, maginang tagapangulo. Uh, gusto ko lamang pong dagdagan kanina yung patungkol po sa tinatanong niyo po kung ilan po ang non-moro IP sa BARM. Ito po yung Teduray, Lambangian, Dulangan, Manobo, Blaan, at Higaunon. Yun po. Yun lamang po, uh, mahal na ginang tagapangulo. Salamat, Senator Padilla. Salamat sa mga representante ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno, hindi lahat man ay nakapagsalita dahil isasubmit pa nyo. Pero kung merong gusto magsalita na handa sa hearing na to, I would be happy to listen. Pero kung sasabihin po nyo ay magsasubmit, sige po, isubmit na lang po nyo para sa TWG. We now uh, move to a TWG schedule for next week. Anong kaya nyo, Monday? Or you announce it? No. No, today is uh, Tuesday. So give the notice this afternoon so that they have enough time. Baka sa TW, sabihin na naman, we will submit. Hindi pwede yun, ha? Okay? Sige. Maraming salapan po. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Ayan, hindi ako nagalit sa inyo. Ha? Happy New Year. Sige. Thank you very much.